But compasses are really awesome. But we have something more awesome on our body than a compass, and that is our hand, and it works the same way. Our hand has joints like this compass, and the joints on our hand do amazing things. If I operate from my shoulder, okay, there's a ball in the bone here, a ball and joint in the shoulder. Okay, there's the bones here, there's the wrist bones and the hand bones. But we're gonna talk about the shoulder. If I was to draw from the shoulder, I could make a very, very big arc. An arc that's so big of a circle, a section of a circle, that it almost seems like a perfectly straight line. So if I was a muralist drawing on a wall, I, I would draw off my big lines, my bold lines, with my shoulder, okay? But on a piece of paper like this, I might work from my elbow. The elbow has a smaller arc, okay? When you're drawing with your elbow, you have a smaller arc. I'm gonna draw my elbow right now, so you can see on this paper, this is, this is literally the arc of my elbow, okay? So it's, it, on a piece of paper, it's, it's pretty much a straight line. If I did it on a wall, it would look, if I was on a wall, the, the line would be more like that, because uh, it's a bigger, bigger part of the arc of the circle, okay? But, and so you can work from your elbow to do nice straight lines on a piece of paper. They make beautiful, the elbow makes, working from the elbow makes really straight, good straight lines. But we're not gonna talk about the elbow today, we're gonna talk about the bones in the wrist. Because the wrist action gives you an arc that's more like this. A natural arc. And today we're talking about scribbling, okay? Especially spirals. Spirals are uh, the universe's gift to us because uh, the universe is spiraled and spirals are our natural line, the line that our hands really want to do. So when we scribble, as long as we have a consistent direction, a rate of speed going one way, we can make a consistent, which I'm just going back and forth, back and forth with a little tiny up and a little tiny down and a consistent movement. So I go like this. If I don't move it, it'll go like that. Oval, over, oval, 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 oval. But if I start to move the oval this way, it's oval, 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 like my slinky. This is something a little kid learns naturally, right? This is scribbling and we don't give scribbling its due respect but we should because scribbling is a very powerful line. Let's just review some of the things we know about already. If we look at a circle, okay, um, I'm gonna look at just this egg right here, for instance, and see if I find an egg that's not cracked. Okay, here's an egg. And this is an oval, right? And um, look at, here's the, the North Pole of this, all declaring you the North Pole I've discovered you. And if I put latitudinal lines around my North Pole, I'm making what's called a contour line. This line I'm drawing seems like I'm drawing a straight line because I feel like I'm going in a straight direction, but really I'm going around the latitude line of this egg, right? But it looks like a target to you, right? It looks like this. That's the lines of latitude, right? And I could also draw lines of longitude starting at my south pole. I've discovered the south pole of my egg. And now I make long, longitudinal lines, which are awesome because they create that loon shape I was talking about the other day in the loon. So here are my longitudinal lines, right? And then I'll continue them over here to my north pole. Longitude, 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 longitude. This is water, this, this ink is um, water soluble, so I can make it bleed. But so anyway, so here I go around with my latitude lines, all the way around. Here, I think I crossed one. It's very sloppy, but you're getting a sense. These are latitude and longitude lines, just like, like a Spider-Man egg now, okay? And those are nice, and I, of course I can draw those latitude and longitude eggs by just doing like I showed you. I could do latitude, I'm using my wrist now, I'm, I'm putting the hand right here on the table. So I have a stable place to draw from, and I go like this, I'm making C's. 
these C's, okay? And if I want to make longitude, I'm also making C's, but longitude is a variable C, like the pumpkin. Here's one side of the pumpkin, here's another side of the pumpkin, here's the middle of the pumpkin, and I keep bringing, making my C fatter and fatter and fatter as I go out. Boom, 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 pumpkin. Right? So here, my, latitude, my longitude, boom, C gets flatter, goes around the other way, longitude, and latitude. But there's another way to, to work on a egg like this, and that would be to make, make it using spirals. So instead of going C, 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 I'm gonna find my oval right here, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go right through it, like this, and continue making the same oval. Do it again. I can do it right here, going this way. Circle. What's the point of this? The point of this is, it's giving you a sense of, you should have a proper speed to every line. And usually lines should go pretty fast. The slower the line, uh, the more th your natural kind of spasms and tremors are gonna come out. I like slow lines. Slow lines are really good. Slow lines are really good. If I'm working on, let's say I'm trying to work out a face from my imagination. And I'm not sure exactly what the face is gonna look like, so I'll work real slow, and I'll make my minds very small, and I'll work out a structure. It'll kind of emerge from the page, but I'm working very slowly because I'm not exactly sure where I'm going with it, and I like this small, this small kind of little line, okay? But once I figure out where it's going, I might get a little more confident with the speed, start accelerating, the line because I want a more organic look and I might I might speed up okay so that's how I work with speed speed a fast line is a very organic powerful flow and energy okay so when we're making these um, scribbles these spirals don't be afraid to go fast your hand was designed to handle it now I'm working this way I'm doing this thing if you're doing small work you're gonna want to work with your fingers and not your wrist, and you're gonna make these kinds of small spirals, which are really the, probably the most fun for a lot of people, for doing fine work, okay? It's like a stitch. It's like a stitch on, on a sewing machine, right? Or a hand stitch. So if I make this kind of pointy spheroid, and I go like this with my, and then I go longitude, maybe latitude, you see where you can really show form. The whole point of these doodle exercises is to get you comfortable with doodling because doodling is power. Let's say I want to make a, a cone with, this, with, this, with, the, with the spiral, okay? So I make my little V here. Now I'm gonna make the bottom yet. You can if you want. Let's say you want your oval profile to be, your little lips to be like this, right? So get, you, get going like this. A lot of artists, like Rodin, for instance, and Degas, they'd start moving their hand before they put their pencil on the paper just to get a look at the model where they're drawing and they get their hand going first and then they commit to the line. Boom! But they commit it and first, before they commit it, they move it in space. Because it was, uh, artists know that it's all about the motion of the hand. It's like a dance, right? So here, we're gonna come around, wow, 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 wow. See, I'm not even drawing the back end of that, but I can. Okay, it's good to start out with drawing the whole line. Even though you know you're not gonna see the back of the cone, it's okay to show the whole line because it's called in sports, they call that follow through. Whether you studied tennis and a tennis server swing or golf or baseball, it don't matter because when you're swinging a bat or swinging a racket or swinging a club, they don't want you to stop uh, when you want to make contact with the ball, but they want that club. You've seen those pictures, right? That club goes all the way through and the bat goes all the way through, okay? and. Uh, the racket, when you serve, you want the serve to, you hit the ball, but then the racket's gonna continue all the way down, okay? Because they discovered that follow through is everything. And the same with drawing. You don't wanna, when you're making a, a, a for instance, the, out, the contour of this cone, a lot of people who aren't used to drawing, they, they, maybe they learn that it's a round surface, but they stop like this prematurely and they, and they make these lines prematurely cut off 
and they flatten out the surface. They flatten it and it looks like poopy poopy. So what you want to do is you want to uh, overcommit and you want to make a whole line that goes all the way through like a tennis serve or a golf swing or a baseball hit. You want to go all the way through because then you will understand those lines on that ball or on that cone or on that cylinder. You will get what is going on with that. And you can throw in the other lines too. Nothing wrong with that. You get that circle on the top and the bottom. It's going to be flatter. There's our Euclid up here, our planar geometry, but then we have more of our kind of hyperbolic and spherical geometries going on. And then the, C, the, uh, the S rule also will help you. Okay? Have fun. You, you know this is going to be like the shape of a fish, right? You know it's going to be the shape of a fish. You know what that shape is. You've held it in your hand. You know it's going to have a, a, wi a, a width and a length and a height and a thickness, right? So go ahead and make longitudinal lines on that fish. That's cool. And make latitudinal lines on that fish. You could hook it around. If you don't want to do the whole spiral, you can make your hand do the spiral, but just hook it here and then hook it here. So you're just committing to part of the line. You could do that. You can make a once you get the hang of moving your hand, you can make a partial commitment to that line. Look at this. Boom, C, 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 C. C, 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 C. Like the C, like the, um, let's see, this worm right here. I'm going to give him C sections here, little sections of his segmented little skeleton, exoskeleton. And I'm going to give him C's. But I overcommit the line. I make the line go up and around and back over a little bit to kind of give it a kind of a worm with eyes and cat-like whiskers, which is really creepy. Okay, so you want to overcommit, or I say overcommit, or overshoot the line a little bit. Okay, because you want the eye, the human eye, to look and think that that form is going around behind it. It's the illusion of art. You want to believe that that ball, these, these this row of balls, are um, behind each other, okay? Or these cards are behind each other, okay? So, spiraling. It's a very, very, very amazingly important skill that um, you learned when you were a little kid. It's, 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 it's stupid, it's so simple, okay? Because it is the structure of your hand, it's the compass of your hand, it's what your hand wants to do, it wants to go back and forth, okay? So let's talk about some other forms. So we have our spheres, scribble a sphere, scribble it in different ways. We have a cone. Okay, and we have a cylinder. And we could truncate these, remember truncation? So we'll truncate a sphere, right, the top and the sides, the top and longitudinal lines, okay? And we could make a loon. We can cut this sphere up like that and make a lemon wedge or a loon like this. Right? Where well, this would be flat here, and this wouldn't, if it was upside down, like this, this would be flatter, where you cut the lemon, and this side here would be spherical. It's awesome. Okay? And then you could, you could also truncate the cone. Don't be afraid to go all the way around. This, this ellipse should be about the same as that ellipse. You can come around with longitudinal lines or latitudinal lines. All right? Um, and you could also make lines, you could have fun with lines on a cone that are the S rule lines. Nature loves the S rule. Nature loves to use the S. It's the most common line in nature. And of course, this is actually a spiral, isn't it? This is, the S is half of a spiral. What? Yeah, the S is actually half of a spiral, isn't it?
you are only seeing half of it. That's what gives the S another reason why the S has so much power. Because you're only seeing half of it, but you know the other half is on the other side. So I go like this, you see half of the S, right? It's going on the other side. And if I flipped it, you'd see these halves here. So this is actually the whole thing if you are Superman and you have x-ray vision, which is totally cool. So that would be the whole pattern of the S, which is like a Chinese finger trap. And uh, so that's another reason why the S is so powerful. It's really because you know it's going around the other side. At least you know now that I told you. Okay, and that's why it has a power. You believe, your eye believes that these are going around the other side, okay? And that's why the S is power. So draw these shapes with S's. What? Yeah, you can draw. You can draw these shapes with S's. And they're really fun. The S is fun. And you could also draw another S like this. And another one like this. It's all allowed. This is Doodle Land. In Doodle Land, it's all allowed. Okay? Have fun. Don't worry. You can't make a mistake. You can't make a mistake because there's no mistakes to be had. Right? Because it's your doodling. Like, what are you doing, honey? Doodling. Oh, okay, have fun. Nobody says, oh, let me see. Did you make any mistakes? Right? Power of doodle. And don't be afraid to make... I haven't really given you the class on this yet. Remember, the nose goes like this. The mouth. C. 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 Go C, backwards three, C, and chin. So simple. This is a silly face, I. But you could also make your nose contour it. Artists like Michelangelo and Leonardo drew contours in their drawings all the time, Rembrandt especially, because they wanted to see this form. Leon, uh, Michelangelo really had this line going on a lot. He drew it this. His lines looked like this when he shaded and stuff, and it's because he, and Leonardo's was like this, he, Leonardo took the same thing, and he'd shade it like this with these hatch marks like this. And the reason why they were different was because Leonardo was a painter, primarily, in a, in a drawer, and Michelangelo was what? He was a sculptor of, of marble. So he had these chisels with these little fork edges on them like this. And he chip, 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 and he chip around the marble and make these lines that went around. And he did this so often so when he drew, like a muscle for instance, on an arm, he saw the form not as a line like this to Michelangelo would be ridiculous. Leonardo might, might shade that like that, but those lines would be anathema, love that word, to Michelangelo because he would have carved that arm like this. He would have carved that arm like this and like that. He would have carved that marble. If you go look at uh, carvings of Michelangelo that are not complete, you'll see the lines all over the stone where his chisel went around and carved and carved. He wanted to leave that muscle. His bodies of marble almost had like no skin on them. He wanted that muscle to see, he wanted, he wanted to see how one muscle went behind another muscle. This is a deltoid and the bicep. Um, and tricep down here and bicep. So he, that's how he drew because that's how he saw it because he saw in the third dimension, uh, maybe better than Michael and uh, Leonardo, but Leonardo was also a master of it too. They're both great, great artists, but they had a different approach, a different temperament based on their different experiences. And that's one of the wonderful things we learn about art is, is that you have two geniuses living at the same time who see the world differently, but both visions are genius, right? And that's the wonderful thing about art. It's not that one is right and one is wrong, um, but they have thing, different things to offer each other. And Leonardo actually came around to believe that Michelangelo had a better technique for drawing, and, la and later in life, Leonardo began to use those lines as well. So that's, for, that's the lesson for today. Practice using spot drawing with spirals. Free your hand to move back and forth, and you will not be dissatisfied with the results. It only makes you looser, it makes you stronger, 
because there's no, in nature, there really is no chaos. This is a lie, like the perfect circle is a lie, and the perfect sphere is really a lie, okay? And chaos is really is our inability to see order. In the scribbles and the bibbles that nature does are actually waves, right, with quantities that are usually very highly patterned. Even though we don't see the patterns, they're there almost every set situation where we really look close enough we see the patterns okay so the patterns are there chaos is bull okay uh, this is Mike from Lux Blocks um, it's a pleasure to be with you today and I'll see you next time adios muchachos <laughs>